facing adversity with faith. All we had to do was be quiet about a few certain issues. But for us, that wasn't an option. That's what got us in a lot of trouble. The cross is controversial. Either you accept it or you reject it. There's no middle ground. Breaking news from I was shocked. My faith now has me embroiled in controversy. The gospel is a dividing line. And my question to you is, do you believe it? Around the world and across America, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is taking a stand for Christ. We should be bold and not afraid to speak out for Almighty God. I'm going to be traveling to all 50 states to hold a prayer rally and calling our nation to God. We're calling it the Decision America Tour. Get involved and use this opportunity to pray for our country while sharing Jesus. It's all coming up next. Hello, I'm Franklin Graham, and I want to take just a, a moment to speak to you about the gospel. Everything that we do at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is geared around taking this message, this gospel message, to the ends of the earth. But it produces uh, different results. Uh, the gospel divides, uh, it separates, um, it, it can even produce uh, riots and revolution. And I want to share with you just a, a verse out of, a few verses out of 1 Corinthians. And it's chapter one and verse 18. And Paul is writing and he's saying, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The gospel is the power of God. And it's foolishness to those that aren't being saved. But to those that God is calling, it's the power of God. And I thought about the foolishness, the foolishness of, of, of preaching, the foolishness of the gospel. What does that mean? See, for me, when I, when I hear the gospel, when someone preaches the gospel, uh, I rejoice. Uh, I'm excited when I hear what God has done for me that Christ died for me, that he saved me from my sin. I get, I get excited about that. But to those that are perishing, it, it's, it's foolishness. They're saying to themselves, wait a second, you mean that Jesus Christ, this guy that lived 2000 years ago, you're trying to tell me this guy was God? And that he took my sins and he allowed himself to be executed on a Roman cross? And he, he died and he shed his blood and then when you tell him, but he rose from the grave and you can invite him to come into your heart and he'll come and he'll live his life through your life right now. They just kind of shake their head and they don't get it. They don't understand it. And it sounds like babble to them. It's foolishness. I've preached many times and uh, of course being up on the, on the platform behind the pulpit, uh, preaching the gospel, I can, I can look at the audience and I can see the faces of people. And there will be somebody who will be with their arms folded. And you tell the person that they're a sinner, well, that offends them. When you tell them that none are righteous, none are good, and, and that all of their works is nothing but uh, filthy rags uh, to our Lord. Uh, their, their arms are sitting there and their arms are crossed and they're kind of glaring at you, or they've got their hands on their hand, they're looking off into to outer space, uh, thinking of something else. They're not engaged in what you're saying because the gospel is foolishness to those who are not being saved. But at the same time, I, I will be preaching the gospel and there will be someone with their arms like this, and then it's like this, and then tears will be coming down their face. It's the same message but one's heart is hardened and the other is being broken. This is the power of the gospel, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, out of heaven to this earth on a rescue mission, and that is to save us from our sins. Uh, we are sinners. The Bible says we've all sinned, we've all come short of God's glory, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And my question to you is, do you believe it? God so loved Franklin Graham that he gave his only begotten son for Franklin Graham. 
that if Franklin Graham would believe, he wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. For me, when I hear that, my, my heart rejoices. It, it leaps within me because I know that God has forgiven me, not because of anything I've done. I was 22 years old when I got on my knees one night and I said, God, I've sinned against you and I'm sorry. And I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for me, that he rose from the grave and I want him to come into my heart and I want him to live and take control of my life. And that night my life changed. That night God forgave Franklin Graham. And he'll forgive any of you that are watching. All you have to do is call on his name, to believe on his name. Trust him as your savior. Believe that he died for you, that he rose from the grave. Invite him to come into your heart. Trust him. Believe me, you'll never regret it. Everything we do at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is about taking this gospel to the ends of the earth. I want to take the next few moments and just share with you the power of God. In India, there's 1.2 billion of people are living, but it's less than 3% of the people are Christians. The Indian people are very God-fearing people, and that is why they go into all sorts of things that they want to worship. This is the greatest harvest field in the whole world. See, everyone has got felt need. In Hinduism and things like that, there is no hope for them. Many religions have works. Jesus did the work on the cross. When they come to Christ, they see the great difference in it. And the gospel gives them hope. God loves you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. This festival, the Festival of Hope, has created such an enthusiasm among the pastors, believers. It touches the whole city. Such a unity has come about, and there's a great excitement in the air as well as expectation. You know, there's a big festival organized, and we've got this one good rally in early in the morning for girls going out, telling people that we love Jesus. Through this, you know, I can get more people this evening for Chennai Hope Festival. Jesus Christ came to this earth on a rescue mission. He came to take your sins. Bluntly put, India needs Jesus Christ, and that's my uh, hope for India. Uh, because people are going through a lot of problems, and the only person that can help them really is Jesus Christ, and not the religions that we hold on to. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, I'll give you rest. What will you do tonight? Uh, they have such a hunger, I was praying that Christ would come into their hearts. He is knocking at the door, and he's waiting. If you're here tonight and you have never confessed your sins to God, if you have never asked for his forgiveness, tonight come home to your heavenly Father. It was just marvelous. The Holy Spirit conviction was very powerful. I just saw people cry, and they just gave their heart to Jesus. I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart. I want to trust him as my Lord and follow him from this day forward. See, it's not about being good or bad. The issue is our personal trust in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he alone is the Savior of the world. This was really the first time an event like this has happened where so many people came together to work under one banner for the sake of Chennai and the gospel. I definitely see a change in the entire Christian community altogether because youngsters will be challenging the elders to step up and that's huge. We've had the opportunity of preaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have seen thousands of people put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And you know, we can only come to countries like this because of your support and because of your prayers. We thank God for your help, for your partnership, for your support. Please keep us in your prayers. God bless you. This is just the beginning of something huge that's gonna come in Chennai. There's not a crowd, there's not anything. It's just the, the sparkle in these eyes, you know, which just say that, no? I'm free. 
Countless people have been set free through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help take this life-changing message to the ends of the earth. Visit BillyGraham.tv or call 877-567-8989. As a thank you for any financial gift, you will receive Abiding in Christ, an audio devotional CD with sermon excerpts from Billy Graham. Partner with us today as we proclaim the gospel. Taking a stand for Christ when your faith is challenged. We have to be willing to live out our faith, whatever the cost. And an opportunity to pray for our country. America needs you. God needs you. This rally for Christ is coming to your state. Coming up next. Jesus Christ died for the world. died for your sins. It's Jesus. One purpose motivates this preacher to travel to the far reaches of the globe. He gave his life and shed his blood for you and for me. The purpose? The simple message of salvation through Jesus Christ. We are the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And our mission is to do everything we can to reach each life with the good news of Jesus Christ. Through my hope, the Billy Graham Library, Internet Evangelism, and Crusade Ministries, we are reaching countless lives with the gospel. Join with us. Help us take the good news to a vast and dark world, one life at a time. Call right now, 877-567-8989 or go to billygram.tv. To have a 34 year fire service career, childhood dream come true, fairy tale career in is astonishing to me, especially in the United States of America. We were given our own reality show. We were incredibly excited about it. And in the middle of production, while we were filming, HGTV started getting some pressure. And then just like that, our show was canceled. The war on traditional values. A firestorm of controversy surrounds it. firestorm that's facing right now on the ground. The ban on gay marriage was overturned in a 5 This is a huge moment for people in favor of same-sex marriage. The attention has been drawn to a series of undercover videos in which Planned Parenthood... As we see why one school district faces a stiff penalty over prayer in general assembly. Citing the prayer violated a 2013 court settlement. Cameras were rolling. Tonight, HGTV is canceling a new reality series. We are continuing series. to follow the controversial story involving Atlanta Fire Chief Calvin Cochran. So much has changed in America from my father's generation to where we are today. You know, when my father went to school, they had the Ten Commandments posted in every classroom. The teachers led in prayer at every schoolroom across America. And how that has changed today. We have taken God out of school. We've taken him out of government. We've taken him out of everything. I describe my career as a childhood dream come true. When I became a firefighter in 1981, I just knew that it was what God had called me to do. Nothing like rescuing someone who's still trapped when you arrive on the scene. It's just a, a wonderful, rewarding experience. Shortly after we got out of professional baseball. We started a real estate company, and uh, a production company found out about us. 
They said, we're going to put together a real estate show. We're going to pitch it to networks. Well, HGTV ended up making us an offer. And the premise of the show was that Jason and I, as house flippers, were going to help families. We were more excited about doing this than just about any business we ever started. Breaking news from City Hall where the Atlanta mayor has terminated Fire Chief Kelvin Cochran after a 34-year career. The mayor's decision came after Cochran's book was published, citing his biblical beliefs on sex and marriage. I was shocked. I have not been private about my faith, and so the same faith that led to my childhood dream now has me embroiled in controversy because I spoke biblical truth about God's perspectives uh, on sex and marriage. Production was going great. We were actually lifting roofs off of houses. Millions of dollars were invested in this show. But before the first episode even aired, we got fired. In 2012, Jason and I led a solemn assembly. In the middle of that, we prayed and asked God to forgive us for all the sins that were in the church and in the nation, including homosexuality, including abortion and these other things. For us to keep the TV show, all we had to do was be quiet about a few certain issues. But for us, that wasn't an option. That's what got us in a lot of trouble. Culture around us is mocking and laughing and sneering at God, but we should take a stand and we should be bold and not afraid to speak out for Almighty God and for His truth. I'm traveling to all 50 states to hold a prayer rally and calling our nation to God. We're calling it the Decision America Tour. We're going to pray for this nation and I'm going to encourage the church to get involved and take a stand. This fiery trial is a suffering for Christ. But in the Christian faith, if we have to choose between living out our faith or keeping our job, the decision for me is to live out your faith. If our faith costs us a reality show, then so be it. We have to be willing to live out our faith, whatever the cost. You know, if America has any hope, it's going to be the church. It's going to be Christians humbling themselves praying to God and asking for not only for forgiveness of sin, but asking God for wisdom and direction. We need to ask God to give us godly men and women to lead our nation. We really believe that now is the time for the church. Get involved with the Decision America Tour. Let's join forces with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and other Christians across our city, across our state, across our nation. We want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. I want people to come to capital steps like this where we're going to pray. And I'm going to preach a gospel message because this is what God has called us to do. And I'm going to encourage Christians to stand up and let their voice be heard. If we don't take a stand, we may never have this chance again. God bless you. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power. It's the power of God. We're not going to compromise. We're not going to try to make the gospel more acceptable. I'm just going to preach the same gospel message I'd preach anywhere else. We're taking that same gospel message and we don't cut corners. The cross is controversial. The cross is a dividing line. Either you're accepted or you're rejected. There's no middle ground. And we're going in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going with the power of God, the gospel, and we need your help. Stand with us. Be a part of this important opportunity to pray and support the 2016 Decision America Tour. Visit BillyGram.tv and click Give or call 877-567-8989 right now. Travel with Franklin Graham across the U.S. for the 2016 Decision America Tour. He's going to all 50 states to rally our nation in prayer. And let's elect men and women who will lead this nation back to really being one nation under God. Meet people in Iowa who are helping lead the effort to pray, vote, and engage. Coming up next. No nation has ever improved morally without a spiritual revival. History proves that point. You know, everybody's talking about elections that are coming along. You know, I'm absolutely convinced that no matter who's elected, America is not going to be saved unless we have a moral and spiritual revival. Revival, 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 revival. 
Our country is in trouble. We have turned our back on Almighty God and we need His help. Without God, there's no hope. America, oh, America. One nation under God, every lost way. So please, get involved in the Decision America Tour. Because if the Church of Jesus Christ would take a stand, then I believe we have hope for America. What might appear as small, or what could be deemed as insignificant, can be merged and combined and unified into something more, something much greater. Just one prayer, one offering, one volunteer, through faith will multiply and transform more hearts and lives for Christ. At Franklin Graham festivals and Will Graham celebrations, People hear God's call and are challenged to respond in faith. Through the My Hope program, millions are being deeply impacted for the gospel through TV, DVDs, and the internet. Visitors to the Billy Graham Library experience an ongoing crusade through Billy's life and ministry. And PeaceWithGod.net connects more people than ever before to Christ, sharing the gospel online with millions. The gospel of Jesus Christ being spread life by life, soul by soul, and grain by grain is what the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association has always been about. We're proclaiming Christ so the entire world can know Jesus. Always good news. I've seen firsthand how fragile life is, All right. awesome. but it also has given that sense of urgency as we don't know when our last day is. All right, who wants quarter one? But you guys will be the first people that they see. You're the welcome crew. I see lots of people coming right now for the Decision America Tour. We're just really hoping that God is glorified today and that our country would just really come back to the Bible. We understand that our country is in trouble. We are in trouble spiritually. We have economic problems. We have political problems. And no political party is going to be able to turn this around, okay? My only hope is in Almighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. In April of 2014, I just started having this gut feeling that I was to be doing something different. And I just, I knew that God wanted me to do something that glorified Him and that brought more people to His kingdom. I wrote in my prayer journal, I said, God, what is it you want me to do with my work? I feel as if I'm not growing your kingdom, and I want to honor you. I want to, I want to do these things. How do I do it? Little did I know that 17 days later, my son went home to be with the Lord. He was out longboarding, and uh, he fractured his skull and he was instantly gone. Sorry. My son was my life here, right? When he was here with me, he was my baby. I just pray for those that are going to be. God gave me an instant sense of urgency. People need to know Him. The times we live in are crucial right now for people coming to Christ. You're there to kind of welcome. You're the welcome crew. You're, hey, 
glad you're here. In I the mean, past like year and a half, I have seen more moral decay in our society than I have in my lifetime. I have seen that the gray is dissolving and the dark is getting darker. Our country's in trouble, but we got a great God. We got an awesome God. It's exciting just to kind of stand back and watch. I just really felt the presence of the Lord here today. And I want to ask you this, are your sins forgiven? God sent his son out of heaven to this earth on a rescue mission to save us from our sins. I thought it was really awesome that he was really genuinely concerned about people's salvation. What's happened is godlessness has come into this nation of ours whose foundations were built on biblical principles, our laws. All that we have has come from God. I appreciate him talking about getting outside the four walls. I really feel our nation's at that tipping point. If we don't move now, we are going to pay a bigger price. The most important thing that we can do as Christians is pray. God hears prayer and God answers prayer. And I don't want you to go home and I don't want you to forget what we're facing as a nation. You see, it's not that the enemy is at the gate. <laughs> They've come through the gates. And we have left the gates wide open and have allowed our moral walls to fall down. Well, I'm here today to say I'm not going without a fight. This is huge. Today's just the beginning. I think it's going to grow from this point on. This isn't something we can just let slip past us. You could just look out into the faces and you knew they were just ready for our country to come back. Franklin came today with a torch, lit us on fire, and said, okay, now let's go and let's burn for our city. America needs you. America needs you. God needs you. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. And God bless America, and God bless each and every one of you. Pray, vote, and engage. Get involved today and financially support the 2016 Decision America Tour. Visit BillyGraham.tv or call 877-567-8989. As a thank you for any financial gift, we will send you the devotional CD, Abiding in Christ, from Billy Graham. Call or log on today and get involved. I want to thank you for, uh, for your help, for your prayers. Uh, you have stood with us uh, this last year. We've taken the gospel, the power of God into so many different countries and so many tough areas. We've got a, a full slate that's in front of us. We need your prayers. We need your help. We need your support. But more importantly, I want to make sure that you understand the power of the gospel and that you have invited Christ into your heart, into your life. That's what we're taking to the ends of the earth. And thank you for standing with us. Thank you for your help. God bless you. And we look forward to working with you throughout this year.